I'm Linda Israel here and I am sharing with you today a Halloween junk journal and I'm going to start with showing you how to gut an old book and use it for the cover. This is a book I picked up for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and it's about HRC. I'm not going to say anything about that. But anyhow, this is the way I do it as I go in and figure out where it is connected in the book. I go ahead and I cut everything free so I just use a craft knife and then carefully cut right along where it is attached to the book cover and just cut away the stack of book pages that are attached. And it takes some finagling sometimes. Depends on how it was constructed. Some books, these are glued differently. Sometimes they're sewn. So this had a piece of cloth that was holding it to the book cover. And when I cut this free, you can see where it was attached. And I just repeat this process on both sides until I have it free. So now I have this whole stack of pages that I could use for my junk journals and then I have a cover and it still has the curved spine to it and then the two book boards. I already have my book cover that I want or yeah the cover that I want to use it's from a different book same concept I just cut it free and then I have a piece of canvas this is from Canvas Court Brands they have a scrap bag that you can order from them. I think it's like five or six pounds. I don't know. It's by the pound of canvas that they put together and sell in their shop. And they had pieces just big enough for a cover. So what I've got next is some Aline's Tacky Glue. And I'm going to go in here and apply some glue to this book cover very liberally a lot of it so that this canvas can adhere to it. Now I'm trying to make sure that this canvas is in the creases as well as down the spine. Really rubbing it. I've got a bone folder and so I'm going to really push and make sure that this canvas is adhered to my cover really well. And when I do my covers, I like to have some neat corners on it. Some people cut them off, some people don't. I'm going to apply some glue across the corner here and then take this canvas and fold it in so that there's a nice edge here. It works better if your canvas is cut close to the edge as possible but you don't want to cut it off and end up with not enough fabric and I'm just making sure that these pieces are all glued the white glue will dry clear I've been using Aline's tacky glue for eons and it just seems to work the best for me once I have the corners uh, adhere down. Now I'm going to add some glue to the canvas to fold over and finish covering this journal. So there is the canvas portion of the journal being covered. You can see that it's nice and neat and smooth all the way around. So now what I'm going to do is decorate this and I need to do the insides as well. So I'm going to grab some different papers to put inside. I've got a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock here. It's from Tim Holtz. It's a pad that I had for a really long time and haven't used yet. So what I need to do is figure out what size to make this inside piece. So I try to measure it out. So approximately, if I make it 7.5 inches, it'll overlap in the middle. And that'll help take care of my spine and getting it covered. And it needs to be nine, about nine and a quarter tall. So if I do this at, do this at seven, 
inches by nine and a quarter. So I want to cut the nine and a quarter first. I've changed my mind. I think what I want to do is if I cut this at exactly six inches, I should be able to cover both sides and use this strip. So if I do this right, I put one on each side and then I have this strip that will go down the center. So let me trim this one and then I will be ready to start putting the cover insides. I've got my corner rounder and I'm going to round the two corners that are going to be on the outside. Let me use my distressed ink to distress the edges. I've got black soot is what I'm going to use. I know that I want a pocket on here, so I've got another piece of this paper that I'm going to cut a strip to make a pocket. So I'm going to make it at three inches, so that'll go across the bottom here. I think I'll do it this way, yeah. So then I'll cut this off and make it six inches so it'll fit. So what I'm going to do is take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew this pocket on there and then add some decorative stitching around the edge. Now I'm going to use the Aline's Tacky Glue again and I'm going to adhere down this piece in the center. I'm going to make sure that I get a lot of glue on here so that it'll stay and move as one piece. Now I'm going to put the side panels on. So now I'm going to cut some pieces to put on the front cover. Since it's a pattern paper, what I think I might do is on the back, I will have the pattern showing. And on the front, I'm going to use one of the Calico Collage images. So I'm going to add some distressing to these, and then I will adhere this cover piece to the other. I'll probably add some washi tape as well. I'm just adding some glue stick to this image so that it will stick onto the cover piece. As I plan to add some washi tape and probably some sewing. I'm going to go around the image with my sewing machine, adding some stitches, and I'll be back. Alright, these are ready to be adhered to the cover. I'm going to adhere these with some Aline's Tacky Glue. And I think I'm just going to adhere it on three sides so that there's, in a sense, a hidden pocket on the cover. I may not put anything in it, but there will be a hidden pocket that could be used. I'm going to use my distress tool and kind of give the cover a little bit of grunginess to it. I know that I'm going to hang a charm off the spine so I've got my crocodile hole punch and I'm trying to figure out which side I want. I want this side. So I'm just going to go in just a little bit from the edge. There's a way. There we go. And punch a hole. It's about, I think this one is an eighth of an inch hole punch. I want to make sure that I'm in enough on the cover. So there's a little hole at the top now. So that's prepared for me to do the next step, which is to mark this with where I plan to punch holes. And I've got to look to see if I've got a little template here. I think this one is close enough. Yeah. I will tell you, and I forgot to do this when I made this template, but I'm going to do it now. 
you'll want to mark which side is the top and which is the bottom because even though you may measure perfectly you may still not get your holes exactly lined up where they need to be so you want to make sure you always have this at the top when you're punching your holes in the pages of your book so I've got a piece of paper that I'm eyeballing I've used it for other things that I have punched a set of holes in three spaces times three so dead center on either side about a half an inch apart so I've got some these are scraps of fun foam and I'm just laying that underneath so that I don't punch a hole all the way to my table and I'm going to punch three holes in each section I like to take my awl and go back and punch that hole a little better and kind of wall what is that called uh, get the hole bigger waller it out is the say <laughs> depends where you're from you want to make sure you don't poke yourself when you're doing this because the awl can be very sharp and you can bleed for a really long time if you poke yourself ask me how I know <laughs> alright so these holes you may not be able to see them perfectly on the outside but they are there and so the next portion is to get the pages ready and I've had people ask me how do I know what size cover to make for my pages well generally I make my pages first in the case of this book I made my pages with the idea that I knew it was going to go into this book cover. So I used 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper. Some of this is scrapbook paper that I cut down to 8.5 by 11. And it fits quite nicely with a little bit of space around the edges to protect the pages. And generally when you stack up three sets of signatures in this case, you can figure out how deep you need to make your book by measuring it. So I'll just squish these together and take a ruler and put on here and say, okay, I need about an inch and a half space so that this book won't be popped open too far. Sometimes I overfill them. I didn't measure very well, but this time I think I did measure really nicely and that even without a tie on here you can kind of see it's not super thick but there's still a little bit of room that if someone adds more stuff they can so what I like to do is try to decide which set is going where and I think I've got them in the order that I want them and I take all the pages and open up to the center and make sure that they're all lined up from the top to the bottom and that these are all seated together I've used a see one two three four five six I got seven sheets of paper in each signature and I take these giant paper clips Now you can use binder clips or something else but I'm using giant paper clips because they seem to work really well and I'm putting those all together so that I can punch holes in those. I'm going to do that to all three. So using this same template, making sure I have the top where the top should be, I'm going to punch my holes and I'm going to use my bookbinder's cradle to do that. So my bookbinder's cradle is set so that I can punch the holes in these pages and it'll go right down through the crease and it keeps all the pages nice and neat and stacked together. I've got some wax linen thread and a really nice heavy book binders needle. If you're interested in these, I have a description box below that has links to my blog as well as the items that I use. So I like to take my wax linen thread and cut a piece that's at least three links long. And since I'm doing three signatures, I'm just going to cut one great big piece that's three times as long. 
for the cover. And then that way I'll just have one long continuous piece to work with. So I'm going to take my needle and go down the center. And I'm going to go to the center of the book because this is going to be my center signature to the outside. And then I'm going to come up and leave a tail on the inside to tie with. And I'm going to find the hole on the outside here and come back to the inside. And then I'm going to go back to the center all the way to the outside again and go to the other hole. I'm going to slip the thread under the first one and pull it towards me. I'm going to make sure that these are tight inside and on the outside. And then I'm going to tie two square knots, one and two. And then I cut off the ends. Sometimes I embellish the ends, sometimes I don't. If I can find the things that I want to embellish this with, I will do so. But I'll remove the paper clips and then I'll move on to the next page set doing the same thing so this is going to be my front set and I'm just going to go from the inside to the outside and then back around again so there is the book bound and I'm not done yet so I want to put something on the spine here. I have some little lace flowers here that I thought would look kind of pretty just on the edge. So I'm just measuring a little bit of this and I will glue this down with some Aline's tacky glue. I've got a little garment pin here that I'm going to thread through this hole at the top that I made. For the charm. And then here is my journal charm that I made. I'm going to attach. Now to close this book, Actually, I don't think it needs one. I was going to make a tie for it, but I don't think it needs one. I think it looks kind of cool without it. So I will save that technique that I'm going to use for a different one. So here is the journal that I have made using Calco Collage Digital Images. I've also used a couple of images that were sent to me from a friend that loves Halloween. So thank you Janice for supplying me with a few images. This is from All Hallows Eve on the cover and then I have some Tim Holtz paper that I used here, washi tape and sewing. On the inside I'm going to add some more goodies but here is a journaling card or page from the kit. This is also from the kit here. This was a different image that I had that was given to me. I just thought she was cute sticking out right there. I use a variety of scrapbook paper and then I did some stenciling and spraying with inks on top. I also used some stickers and then I have what I call my it's it's my uh, mop-up papers and these papers have a letterhead on it And this belonged to my husband's business, but instead of throwing it away, I'm using it. So to me, this is junk that I'm using in my journal. And that's what some of these white pages are. So this is strategically covering up that letterhead. So look at papers around your house and get ideas. Here is covering up again part of the letterhead. This is a page out of a book, and this is part of the kit with Calco Collage. Here is an envelope that I made, and I have a tutorial for that. I'll have the eye there so you can see how these were made so you can make your own. 
There are three signatures of seven sheets of paper for a total of 84 pages in this journal. This is a hidden spot other than you couldn't see it until the, the punch. And this is a photograph. My brother gave me a whole stack of photographs and miscellaneous papers that were thrown in a trash while he was at an auction. And I thought, well, that's kind of creepy looking, that creepy looking hotel. Would you stay there? I don't know. And then I've made it so you could journal on the back side of that card, and it fits right in here. Sticker. This is one of my rubber stamps. Here I laid down a die cut from my Cricut, so let's pretend, and then I used my distressed inks, and then when I took it away, you could see the image. This is also from Calico Collage. I used a little bit of some cheesecloth here. This is one of those index Rolodex cards that I decorated. I got a whole stack of them. They're normally like 10 bucks or something. I got them for $2 for like 400 And I thought, well, I can use those. This is from Calico Collage. This is also from Calico Collage. Here's the other half of the envelope. When I trimmed the envelope to fit into my journal, I saved that piece and I made a little corner tuck spot so you could write something there and then you have a place to stick things. This one is glued down. That's also from the Calico Collage kit. This is one that Janice sent me that I just thought was kind of cool with the owl. The little tag I made. This is an old punch card from the back in the computer days. This is an image that Janice gave me here. This is glued down. There's a tuck spot here. This page flips out. Another card that Janice gave me, and this is Calco Collage here. This is Calco Collage here, and it opens up. Just a scrap that I stamped on. Another little die cut that I got from my Cricut. This is from the Cricut, and I used a safety pin to just add it as a tag to hang belly band. This is an image that Janice also gave me that I thought was kind of neat. It's another one of the Calco Collage images. This is a tuck spot here. It's another page from Calco Collage. Here's a sticker. Oh, the spider was cut on my Cricut. Another tuck spot there. This one flips out. Here's another one of the envelopes that I made. And it has a journaling card inside. And then this tucks there to keep it closed. This image here is from Calco Collage. This is one of those notepads that I picked up a while back and I just thought it was neat paper. The pages from Calco Collage print to be 5x7, and I, since I wanted this to be 85 by 11 I just distressed the outside area or white area, and then used a little bit of washi tape to help cover that up, just to make this look like it all belonged on this page. When you see an image stamped in black, I used Brutus Monroe Detail Ink. I think that one's backwards, yep. This is a little envelope from Calico Collage that opens all the way up so you can journal inside of there. The skulls that are in the corner I cut on my Cricut as well. I'm trying to move my hand so you can see that. If you haven't joined the Friendly Junk Journal Facebook group, you should do so because we are having a Halloween contest. Make a card or a tag of any size, so long as it is Halloween in nature, and you can join the contest. There is a folder in our photo albums where you will upload your project that you've completed, and we will have a random drawing on October the 31st. And... The winner 
by popular vote will get to go compete with the junk journal junkies etc group for a prize that they're having so this is another one of those old photos that was given to me by my brother and I guess it just didn't get exposed correctly but I thought it was kind of ghostly looking so I stamped some bats on it and then put this sticker on top and it goes in this little pocket that I made journal card This is from my friend, Janice, thank you. Here's another tuck spot. This is from Calico Collage here. And then I just made a little journal card with a little skeleton because I thought it kind of went together. Oh, I missed a page. I hate it when I do that. Well, I guess I'll just leave it in here and the person will have a fun piece that will take out. That's why I've tried to check and recheck before I bind. I make mistakes too, y'all. <laughs> this has a little spider that I put on here. This is die cut from my Cricut, and then that's two pockets. This is an envelope. I got a new Tim Holtz envelope die, and I cut some paper. I just thought it was kind of fun to play with, and then I just die. I used a hole punch to make the circle, and then I hand cut out that little bat to put on top, and then that tucks right in. another card that I stamped and then sprayed and sprinkled with Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. The pages that have designs on it is from Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. Here's the witch silhouette. And another to put in the pocket back here. There's the back cover. Here's the spine. And then here is this really cool charm that I made, and there's a separate video that shows how I put this together, so you can see that. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to deconstruct a book and use that for your cover for a junk journal. If you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. If you haven't already liked, comment, or liked and subscribed to my channel, please do so. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And let's see, share my videos. Please share them so that other people can see it and get ideas as well. Again, these were from Calico Collage. And I believe I'm going to have this in my shop for sale. So check the description box below for the link to my shop. Again, thanks so much for watching. Check out the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group to learn more about our contest that we're having up as well. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.